Come to dinner with us. We are pouring a classic vintage Merlot and cooking up a New York sirloin, a foodie bonanza. Plus, Susan has plenty of tips on preserving wine and decanting it along with an easy, simple steak cooked to perfection. Undercover Jet Setter helps you jet set at home without being a millionaire. And cheers, everybody. Welcome. Uh, we've got a treat for you tonight. This is a uh, this is a culinary undercover jet setter first. Uh, we have great steak here that we've cooked for you. We'll show you how we did that. But really, the star is going to be the wine. And it is a 1999 Duckhorn Merlot. Now, we're doing this in 2018, so we're talking 19 years. This is a classic red wine that if you can get you got to have. We're going to talk about it, but we're also going to talk about the fact that you did a great job of preserving that for all those years. So, because sometimes, you know, you can have a wine that's five years old and it turns to vinegar. This, this is absolutely brilliant. If you've never had a duck horn, get a duck horn. Enjoy it because it's one of the great red wines. It's a California red and uh, there's a lot to talk about, but this is uh, this is heaven. This is this is exactly what jet setters will will want all the time. Absolutely, uh, great steak, great red wine. That's what it's all about. Well, and you you said it perfectly. Duckhorn is an amazing winery. They do great stuff, um, and what they do, they do perfectly. And so, back in the day when um, Merlot was not known, they were making great Merlot. I ain't drinking Merlot. Well, and thank you. That's uh, sideways. Sideways. <laughs> sideways came along in the two thousands, and it kind of changed the whole. But it kind of changed the whole world of Merlot. But let me just say, it changed it because Merlot had changed. And so what happened was, back in the late nineties, when or early nineties and late eighties, we were drinking Merlot. If you loved wine, you loved Merlot, nobody knew about it. And it was one of those grapes and, and it came from France, of course, um, saint Emilion area. And um, unless you knew about it, you weren't drinking it. Um, what happened was, all of a sudden, American palates took to the Merlot and they started loving it. And because it's a very amenable, subtle, perfect grape. And what makes it so beautiful is it's so smooth and silky, and it's got those mm -hmm. dynamics of like chocolate and cherry and, and dark fruits. And, Blackberry, and little vanilla. Exactly, and so mm -hmm. smoothly. When you make it right, it blends them together in this beautiful way that, um, no other grape really does and and that's why they've adopted it as or back you know mm -hmm. way back when the first bordeaux were made because they blended the the merlot grapes in because the other grapes the cabernet franc and the cabernet sauvignon are a little more tanniny so they blended this in along with some other grapes um to make it more smooth and more drinkable in the bordeaux and so the merlot grape is really special because it can stand on its own or it can be blended and that's the beauty of it now you just had it with some steak what this do you is, think this is this is this is fabulous and and also understand too that the the american wine palette was changing especially in the 70s getting away from the big batch wine that we used to drink mm -hmm. and we were becoming more refined that's when merlot came around and it's exactly the description you gave that people started oh, I want something a little bit more refined, mm -hmm. and this is what they had. And unfortunately, like you say, with Sideways, it got a bad name. Merlots now are fabulous Merlots. We've, we've had a number of really great Merlots. Now we should also say that we've done, uh, we, we've given you some $7 bottles of red wine that are great. This is not a $7 bottle of wine. If you're gonna no. get this today, even at a store, the lowest price you're going to get is like $80 mm -hmm. for this. So you've got to be a wine lover, snob, historian to to get this. It's worth it for you to have this. Uh, the taste of this to me is still is still superb. We got this wine 
or I got this wine. You got it long back before. Back in the early 2000s. Long before you and I um, ever met. And I, I personally got it because I knew Doug Horner was a great vineyard. I knew they made great for, I knew they made great Merlot. And it was a wine that was going to stand the test of time. Now, I did cellar it correctly. So I kept it in a cellar, 55 degrees or, or less, where it was going to be kept and preserved. And that's why to this day, it's, it's so phenomenal. And you could actually buy a wine now and it's $80. So when I bought it, it was probably, I want to say 25, mm -hmm. something like that. You can buy a Duck Horn Merlot today of a different year and it's going to be around $25. Mm -hmm. it, they still make great Merlots. It's just that we had to have this one because we we're like, well, at some point it's going to go bad. We need to drink it. It's so amazing. Um, it was cellared correctly and that's what you want to do. You make sure that you keep your wines in a cellar that is at least 55 degrees, but not not too much lower than that, not too much higher. Mm -hmm. If you do that... Also tell folks the fact that you actually moved a couple of times, so you had to be very careful. Oh, sure. Well, I did I did move, and when I moved it, I moved it from cellar to cellar, so mm -hmm. I kept it always. It was maybe for five hours in a temperate, uh, temperature where it wasn't maybe 55, mm -hmm. but it was a very short amount of time, and it wasn't boxed up in a crate, it wasn't getting hot. It, it was something that I just very much took care of and I was very careful with it and the great thing about a Merlot is that in this day and age I mean I mean you just look at it look mm -hmm. at it and look at its legs mm -hmm. I mean it's so amazing it's full-bodied it's still it's chocolatey it's got the upfront cherry and the dark fruits that you love and it's so silky smooth and that's what we love about it it's silky smooth and that's why i think it got adopted as a red wine for the american public way back in the beginning of the era when it went into sideways and mm -hmm. sideways kind of ruined Merlot, but it also ruined Pinot for that matter. And I love the movie Sideways, by the way, I'm a big fan of everybody. Um, but it ruined Pinot because after Sideways, Pinot went the way of Merlot. And that's what happened. Everybody started making Pinots and that's a far more difficult grape to grow than even a Merlot grape. So. Uh, you know, everybody was making Pinots and that was a bad, bad, bad thing because Pinot can only be made in a certain climate and you have to do it a certain way and it has to be, and it has to be cared for. It's a very picky grape. Mm -hmm. Merlot, a little bit easier. Mm -hmm. um, and when you grow Merlot the right way, it just produces this amazing silky velvet foggy. chocolate. Yeah, it loves the fog. I mean, it just, you know, well, what grape doesn't love the fog, actually, to, if we talk about mm -hmm. that. But it actually, I mean, it comes out. It's so mm. silky. It's velvety. It's delicious. Mm. And you're just eating all the steak. So I have my one little piece over here that I can is, eat. Yeah, good news expert, is he's so eating all the steak. <laughs> Bad news is I have nothing to eat. <laughs> well, let's talk about the steak here because this is a New York cut mm -hmm. and um, superb. Uh, and really easy to do, um, very, very quick, easy. very simple. Um, the the biggest problem is, is you, you got to wait and let it rest, mm -hmm. and you got to know when to put well, it in the fry for pan. all steaks. Yeah. So um, let's take a look at how we made it.
this New York steak is great. A lot of butter on it. You put a little pepper, you'll put a little salt. This goes incredible with this. I could see this with a ribeye. Lamb. Oh. Oh my God. Merlot and lamb, like match made in heaven yes. right there. I could yeah. see this with a salmon. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think it goes great with a salmon. And the reason is that the Merlot grape has this beautiful like pairing with food of synonymy and harmony and beautifulness and I made that word synonymy up mm, just so cool. you know. I'm looking it up word. right now. Yeah, go ahead. Um, <laughs> um, but it's like it's something that it pairs so well with food but it also pairs when you drink it alone or you could pair it with cheese. So it stands up to many things. Um, it's almost like the perfect wine which is why I think America adopted it. Absolutely. You know, it just makes sense. But going back to um, its roots, really, it came from Saint Emilion, France. Uh, those places are where you get phenomenal Merlots. And if you ever see a Saint Emilion, that just translates as a Merlot. It's a French wine. French wines basically use regions as their namings, and so Saint Emilion is where they grow the best Merlot grapes in. In Napa, they grow Merlot, Merlot grapes everywhere. And this happens to be a very good one because going back to Duckhorn, they are a vineyard that is amazing. They've always done back things right. Back from the 1970s? Right. Back from the 1970s. They've oh. always done things right and they will continue to do things right. So their Merlots to this day are perfect. The other vineyard that we might want to mention that does great Merlots is St. Francis, Saint and we'll Francis do a review on them too, because th they make some amazing Merlots, and if you're interested in this grape and would like to discover more about it, that's another um, show that you'll want to watch. But we have paired this Merlot with this great steak, that he is eating all of it, and I've had hardly any, so I can't even comment on how it goes with it, but the little bit that, that I've had, I would say, is phenomenal and that just shows you where you can use this wine in so many ways risotto pasta salmon steak beef lamb i mean pork there, i i don't know what it doesn't go with you know cheese there's agree. so many things that it goes with it's it's amazing and you can do it before dinner with with even mm -hmm. a strong cheese Absolutely. you can do it after dinner this could be your dessert Oh, absolutely goes great with, with chocolate. chocolate oh you absolutely have a dark chocolate with mm -hmm. this i mean this is this is like this is heavy this is uh the, the things you oh, don't even be eyeing this this is my piece no. i saw you looking at it no i'm i'm getting the last scraps now just <laughs> and, and, and if you watch a lot of our shows you realize that we're both big white wine drinkers uh i enjoy red wines um but because I had migraine headaches, I stayed away from them. So I only drank really good red wine. So I'm a red wine snob. And so if, I drink, if I'm drinking a red wine, you know it's really, really good. <laughs> and um, this is, uh, I, can, I could just have this as a meal. Mm -hmm. To me, um, this is, now this to me is, is just as a slice of heaven. Because not only a great piece of meat, cooked medium rare, it's got butter on it, it's got salt and pepper, and simple, so you get the taste of the meat. But the red wine, and most of you know that we are white wine drinkers. You're more of a red wine drinker than, than I was because I, yeah. I, I had migraine headaches growing up, so I stayed away from the reds. When I drink a red, you know it's an incredible red. Mm -hmm. So what's, what's great about this is not only pairing this together, but um, talk about the fact that there's not a lot of tannins in this. Or if oh, they are, the right. tannins are, are very subdued, so you don't get that... And a lot of people that don't like red wine, they don't like that earthy taste. I do like that earthy taste. Um, you don't get a lot of this. You get more of the berry and the chocolate and the vanilla here that really, really pops out. And it just, like we're saying with meat, it flows with so many other things. Though. Oh, absolutely. And that you make a very good point. And, and a very good point, in fact, is because that's why the Merlot grape really was adopted by American palates because um, they weren't really used to the tannins of the French red wines, mm -hmm. as in Cabernet Sauvignon, Cabernet Franc, things like that. And so what happened was when the Merlot came out, it's so silky smooth and velvet and just 
chocolate and berry and um, not in the same way that a Zinfandel is because Zinfandel is very mm -hmm. fruit forward. Mm -hmm. This holds back. So it's got the fruit, but it's got the dark fruit and then it's got this velvety, beautiful texture to it, which really makes it phenomenally adoptive. If you've got someone who has never had red wine or is against red wine, this is the perfect entree into red wine. And you know, when you were go or, big, I go big, say, go big, and go good. Well, and and I, you know, it's not big like a Zinfandel big. Mm -hmm. It's just it's subtly combined. It's just such a great grape that just melds well with a, a novice palate or a palate that's never had any any kind of exposure. And I have to say, probably when I was growing up, and I was like in 16, 17, 18, um, I lived outside the United States much of my life, and. I did have this kind of a wine, and I really, this is what got me inducted and indoctrinated into a red wine. Inducorned in, yes. Inducorned, <laughs> hooked <laughs> for, on a duckhorn. But I was drinking red wines that were um, very much Merlots, they were French, they were Merlots, they were Cabs, but I, that's where I, I really got the indoctrination from Merlots because I caps when I drank them mm -hmm. were a bit tanniny for me. They're not now, but back in the day when yep. I was eighteen, sure. they were. It makes a lot and of sense. you know, this the Merlot grape really is what addicted me to red wine. Mm -hmm. And then I was kind of like, all right, I'm a red wine fan. And and you know, that was back in the day, way before Sideways, way before anybody was making Merlots um, the wrong way. They were making them all the right way. Let me ask you this, because mm -hmm. one of the things I notice when I taste, when I have red wine compared to white wine, and mm -hmm. so you need you need to dive in there because I need I'll to just, have more. I'll just you, literally otherwise, put my face I'll have on the plate. nothing for dinner, and, and, and you'll have and everything. Face will be on the plate. And I'll be eating that. So. <laughs> but what I notice is that when I you know, when I taste a white wine and I taste it with food, mm -hmm. I swallow and finish the food first. But when I have meat with red wine, I don't finish the meat. I let the red wine wash over that because I want to get that. And a lot of that, even with the Merlot, I get that with the cabs, I get the, my salivary glands, as I call it, back here, <laughs> just creates just an incredible <clears throat> pool of food and flavor in my mouth. Is that normal? Totally, Is that's it? totally normal. Mm -hmm. And that's because when you drink red wine, the fruits and the grapes that have been made with this and the meat and the tannins of the meat and the tannins in the wine, kind of just blend perfectly together in your mouth and you're like oh my god explosion of happiness and beauty and that's all you want mm -hmm. i mean when you taste something and you eat something that's really what you want and that's what merlot does so well is it gives you a perfect palate to pair with food and i think it yeah, that's why I love it. That's personally why I love it and why I continue to drink it. Although I only, during the sideways days, I would only drink it with uh, certain, certain friends, like certain friends <laughs> and certain wineries, maybe three wineries that made it well during that time <laughs> because everybody was like, lay low, don't say you like Merlot. <laughs> if you drank it from the right wineries, you were having perfection, always. Now, we should also tell everybody that, that we decanted this mm -hmm. because it is an older wine. And then the other thing is, and while I put the wine in your face and people can't see you, um, <laughs> ah. I'm, I'm going to finish it. And one of the reasons that I... I the I, old wine play. That is what I am doing, yes. <laughs> the reason why I want to finish it is because when you open something this old, you really should, you know, don't, don't let it sit around. Because Absolutely. of the oxidation. Talk about the decanting and how important that is. And and we weren't even certain if we needed to do it, but it was a good it was a good idea to do it. Exactly. Well in this case, for the Merlot, we probably didn't need to do it, but it was good that we did do it because whenever you have a wine that's aged and more specifically a Bordeaux, a Cabernet, something like that. Yeah you really wanna make sure that it's decanted because before you give it to your guests, you wanna oxygenate it. And, and what that does is it brings in the life and the vibrancy of the grape. 
So that's twofold. The first thing is, if you drink it straight away, it's um, amazing. You want to have it um, decanted and maybe sit for about an hour to get oxygenized. And once the oxygen goes into the wine, basically it is bringing out all the flavors of the grape and waking it up and bringing it full, full back to life. I sound very French saying this, oui, but oui. full, full back to life. Um, and you want to drink it quickly after that. So once you have oxygenated it with the decanter or any other form of oxygenization, there's many other forms besides what we used here. Mm -hmm. We did use um, a very old style, traditional, expensive one, but you could also use something that you, you buy for $49.95 at wine.com or anywhere they have they sell these and basically what they do is they just bring oxygen into the wine and when you have an old wine you want to oxygenate it because you want to bring the life back if you don't do that um, it's going to be stale so you want to not just pour it in a glass you want to like vibrate it mm -hmm. and make it full of life and vibrancy yeah. and that's how you get it to be back to its normal state but after you've done that, you want to make sure you drink it quickly because once you've done that, um, something that's that old, you want to drink <laughs> that night. That's you do not, not want to put it back in the refrigerator. That's not more. the wine that you go, oh, I can put my other cork in and blah, 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 and whatever other device you have. You cannot do that. That does not work for this. This, you need to drink all of it that night because otherwise it, it's going to be tainted and you, you don't want that you, you don't want to ruin something so beautiful that you've aged forever like we did with this and mm -hmm. make it bad so don't do that and you're drink you're eating more steak well it's because i have really? another question for you so uh, um <clears throat> so that i couldn't eat more steak well that's true so <laughs> when after we decanted it and we just didn't have time to show everything but we we were a little frightened <laughs> that maybe it wouldn't be as good. Um, and the surprise when you tasted it the first time, because I know I had a lot of apprehension was, I, I am looking at your at your expression, and your expression mm -hmm. was like, oh, thank God. That was my mm -hmm. expression after seeing your expression. And that can happen. I mean, oh, I've, yeah, I've had it happen before. And um, so we were... We were lucky, and you know you took care well, of it well. And luck, mm, mm -hmm. I, I, you know, in this case, it's a duck horn. So we already had the backing of that winery. It was going to be great if it was cellared well. It was going to be good, and we didn't need need to really worry. The main thing is that you're cellaring it right, and you have a winery that is making the right thing. So what we did was we we bought a duck horn way back when and we cellared it right and then we did decant it which in this case we probably didn't need to but it actually enhanced it mm -hmm. um quickly and it was very nice so like what you want to do is if you have an old bordeaux or something like that you definitely want to decant it but drink it that night um i would decant it and let it sit for like an hour at least for a bordeaux if you have something that is from a great vineyard always just you know smell it when you open it and if it smells like a good wine if it doesn't smell like vinegar and it doesn't smell old and yep. dusty you know you're good and, the and then you can good. decant it yes and and that's the main thing and so if you were basically doing something and you open a wine and it's like either the cork is all disintegrated or it's it smells like a dusty old closet or it smells like vinegar, mm -hmm. then you know, don't even worry. It's don't gonna, even, it's, it's, it. it's gone by the wayside, yeah. But when, when you have something like this, celebrate. Bring your friends mm -hmm. over. Bring your friends over who really appreciate great wine. And steak. And, and have a steak, especially if, <laughs> if it's gonna be You can get a, a piece of it. And uh, <laughs> I know, it's great being the wine snob, not the expert. <laughs> and um, bring somebody over and open it with, you know, two or three other people and, and just enjoy it. And uh, you have to do the things it takes, it takes some effort. You, know, you gotta store it well, you gotta decant it. So it does take time. But when you do that, trust me, this, this is like, I mean, this is, this is the stuff if you're a foodie, 
dreams made of. You, you live for this. So enjoy it. Great job. Well, cheers. And I did have one other thing to say. Okay, so we're not going <laughs> to say goodbye. So, anyway. All right. You kind of already said it, but I, w I wanted to say it again. What if I said it? Why do you have to say it? Because I have to say it too. Just make sure when you open a great bottle of wine or you have something that you've stored and preserved forever and you preserved it the right way or you spent a lot of money on something, make sure you share it with someone who loves it mm -hmm. as much as you do because it's very important because it'll actually become intrinsically so much a part of you yeah. and it means something and it wine creates a memory just like um if you take the winemaker's experience making it going to producing it and then you store it and then you drink it it's it's such a beautiful dichotomy and and something that brings on memories of beauty and it's history it's history it's history i mean because these you know duckhorn started in the 1970s great vineyard still strong today and you get the history of everything they're doing and yet at the same time too you have all the senses you have all the senses that we're hitting the, the smelling the taste mm -hmm. the, the, right. the the food that goes with it and so it, it has to be a celebration so if you're if you're knuckleheads like us and you love this go out and celebrate it and enjoy it this is this is the best so good job cheers cheers everybody thanks